My name is Kelly Van Valkenburg, and I'm here with my colleagues, Lauren Tyler and Zoe Pamantuan. We work with the Educational Technology and Library Services in Colton Joint Unified School District. We're here today to speak about media literacy for you and your students. Understanding and teaching media literacy is the responsibility of all educators, and you can easily weave it into your learning activities. Media literacy is the ability to identify different types of media, understand and interact with those messages. Accessing, evaluating, using, and integrating information into learning are the foundations of media and information literacy. Classroom teachers are encouraged to work with their teacher librarians to explore resources and integrate media literacy into their instruction. So we have a few tips to share with you today to help promote media literacy strategies in your classroom. And the first tip is to use a fact checking website. So students are inundated with a lot of information online at all times, uh, and it can be difficult for them and really for all of us to differentiate between fact and fiction. So one of the things you can do is encourage your students to visit a fact checking website. Some of my favorites are PolitiFact and factcheck.org, but even something like Snopes can be really useful when students are trying to uh, check the validity of an urban myth. So I think that you will find these useful. In addition, I want to point you to Common Sense Media. This is one of my favorite websites. And Common Sense Media has phenomenal lessons, worksheets, videos ready to go so that you can actually teach your students fact checking. So I highly recommend that you visit Common Sense Media. Related to fact checking, another thing that teachers and students can do is to just do a reverse image search. Google makes it really easy to search for an image on the web, a reverse image search. So showing me all the places an image exists. There are a couple of ways to do it. And the first is simply to go to Google search, but it has to be Google images search and use the little camera icon to upload an image and search for it. And then it will show you all of the places on the internet that that image exists. However, there is an easier way to do this, and this is my favorite way. If you are using the Chrome browser, all you have to do is right click on any image and select search Google for image. This will immediately do a reverse image search for that image and show you where it lives on the internet. Now it's really important that you don't just teach your students how to do the reverse image search, but that we also teach them those critical thinking questions to ask themselves about their search results. So where does this image exist online? Where does this image come from? So make sure that we teach them those important questions when they look at their search results. Once again, I'm going to point you to Common Sense Media. Common Sense Media, they have resources for everything, but they actually do have lessons and resources for uh, reverse image searches. So if you are not using Common Sense Media, the website yet, I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. Head on over there, sign up for an account and start looking for these resources for you, your students, and even your families. When teaching students how to search for information, it is important to teach them to not only fact check results and to think critically, but we also wanna encourage you to go beyond Google. Our third tip is to expose students to quality curated resources such as databases. Students might be required to use some databases as part of their research, or the databases can provide content for teachers to share with their students. 
students can also be encouraged just to browse the databases and follow their curiosities. Fortunately, in California, through the California K-12 Online Content Project, all schools and all students have access to a suite of free databases, which include Britannica, a suite of ProQuest, a phenomenal resource called Teaching Books. And within ProQuest, there is Research Companion, which has self-paced lessons that teach research skills, including fact checking, citing sources, avoiding plagiarism, and it's really a valuable resource. If you're not sure if your school has them, check with your teacher librarian, the IT department, or reach out to the County Office of Education. Tip number four, teachers don't forget to prominently cite your own sources and model appropriate media literacy. You wanna to explain to students why those citations are important. And you wanna draw attention to your own citations whenever you use them. Modeling this behavior teaches students to give credit where it is due, it helps them to avoid plagiarism, and it provides them the opportunities to follow source links for research and for fact-checking. A really great site is the research and citation resources from the online writing lab at Purdue University. And also remember that the databases have built-in citations. The ProQuest Research Companion has self-paced lessons that teach students how to cite their sources. And our last tip is how you can improve students' critical thinking by teaching them to engage with media messages using five key questions for media inquiry. Question one, who created the message? Question two, what techniques were being used? Question three, what perspectives are represented? Question four, which perspectives might be missing? And question five, why is this message being shared? So I hope that you found some of these tips to be useful and that you will be able to use some of them in your classroom. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us.